Hey Bronco Nation, we are here in Moab, Utah to continue our trail series video. And for today's trail series video, we are gonna be doing Fins and Things. Now Fins and Things is a level four rated trail, which means we're gonna encounter steps up to 18 inches, and you're gonna want 33 inch tires, good driving skills, and a rear locker is gonna be really helpful if you plan on doing some of the more challenging obstacles. Now we're gonna walk you through the trail. We're gonna show you what you can expect. Obviously we can't show you the entire trail as it is about nine and a half miles and does take up to four hours, but we're gonna show you some of the more difficult obstacles a variety of terrain so you can get a feel of what you can expect if you bring your very own Bronco out here. Now we're a little over equipped for what you will need on fins and things. Of course, we have a wild track that has been lifted with 37 inch tires. We do have a front and rear locker, but no stabilizer bar disconnect. But again, as I mentioned, if you're running 33s, uh, have good driving skills, don't have anything hanging too low, uh, you will be able to do fins and things just fine. In addition, today we are going to be testing out the highly anticipated Bronco Trail app for the very first time. It's been referenced as the Ford Pass Performance app, but it has been rebranded as the Bronco Trail app and should be out and available to you by the time this video comes out. Now we are using a beta version, so it doesn't have all the features and capabilities and we may encounter some bugs along the way. So just keep that in mind. This is one of my favorite trails in Moab. I've done it over a dozen times and we are so excited to show it all to you today. If you are new to off-roading, uh, there might be a couple easier trails you're gonna wanna experiment with and try or have attended one of the off-road schools before you attempt this. But if you're feeling comfortable behind the wheel with your capabilities and your vehicle's technology, this is a great trail to enjoy a half day experience out here in Moab. Okay, so now we are at the start of Fins and Things. We've gone ahead and put the vehicle in four low and we are going to be testing out and trying the highly anticipated Bronco Trail app for the very first time. Now I have it up here on my phone. My phone is plugged into uh, the sync system with Apple CarPlay. So we also have the Bronco Trail app up on the screen here. It took a little bit of finicking to kind of get it to activate and properly um, pull up but uh, hopefully there's a few bugs and glitches that'll be worked out by the time the full version, uh, the production version of the app comes out when you all use it because we're on a beta test version right now. But we're gonna be giving you guys our full thoughts. You're gonna be going through it with us. I have not used it before. This is the first time using it on the trail and we're really excited to see what it has to offer. So as you can see on here, uh, and we'll put a screenshot on the screen as well. It shows you all the different trails that are already pre-programmed into the app right here on my phone. So today, of course, we are doing fins and things. So if you zoom into where we are, it obviously shows your location. You can see a red dot. We'll go ahead and tap on that and it shows you fins and things. It shows you the outline of the trail. It is a three difficulty uh, that it's 9.36 miles, takes about four hours uh, and you're gonna climb 5,090 feet in elevation. Uh, so you're actually not gonna do anything beyond this here, except download it. So if you are in an area where there's no cell service, you can go ahead and uh, tap on the trail and then scroll down to view download options. You're also gonna have information here, weather, all sorts of stuff about the trail, permitting required, etc. cetera. Uh, but we will save that for another day. Uh, so we've already gone ahead and downloaded the trail uh, and then we are good with the phone for now, but we're gonna transition over to the screen uh, in the in instrument panel here or on the dash, I should say. And to start, you're gonna push the three little lines down here in the bottom left. Go to My Trails. It's gonna pull up your My Trails here and you can see we have fins and things. We're gonna go ahead and tap fins and things. It's gonna show you more of that information, the time, the distance, all that stuff. Uh, and then we are going to click Start Guidance. Okay, it says stay right. Left is an alternate route. We are right. Next waypoint is in 0.6 miles. We're gonna throw the vehicle and drive. And we're gonna go. Now, I really love Fizz and Things. It's one of my favorite trails out here in Moab. I've done it uh, probably, I don't know, over a half a dozen times for sure. Level three to four, um, so not super technical. But what I like is that it's in the Sand Flats recreation area, as I mentioned um, a little bit ago, which is close to town. It's really accessible. You can do it in the morning and be right back in town for lunch. Um, and you don't need a super highly equipped Bronco. Now, of course, the Bronco we're in um, is on 37s. It's a wild track, so it has the front and rear lockers, no stabilizer bar disconnect, but we are aired down to 20 PSI in four low, uh, and we really only should need our rear locker, if anything, on this trail. Uh, so you'd be fine on 33s in a Badlands. Of course, any Bronco equipped with a Sasquatch package it would be just great. Um, and there's probably a couple other trims as well, Black Diamond for instance, that you would probably be able to do this pretty easily in uh, with the right tires. But of course, make sure uh, you're doing something that is within your comfort zone and within your abilities. Now, as with most trails in the Sand Flats Recreation Area, uh, Fins and Things does a lot of slick rock. 
which is great on days like today when it's sunny because the tires are warm, the rock is warm, which gives you a lot of really solid grip between the rubber and the sandstone here. Uh, there are some parts of this trail that are a little more bony, a little more rocky, and even some silty kind of winding dirt roads. Uh, but a lot of it, you're gonna be going up and down Desolate Rock um, with some great views of the LaSalle Mountains. Now, another really cool thing about fins and things is that there's lots of options. So you'll come to a section of the trail where to one side is an easier option and to one uh, the other side is a more technical, difficult option. And we come to one of those here where it's easy slick rock up on the left or a more technical challenging ledge on the right. So we're gonna give this ledge a go and see if we can see if we can make it happen. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the rear. Come on up. How am I looking? Front's gonna crawl. Keep that momentum through. Ooh. <laughs> Go ahead and unlock both front and rear. Probably didn't need front locker, but it was good to get us pulled up over that. As I mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a lot of areas for easier or harder options. We're about three quarters of a mile into the trail and there's a sign with pointing harder option to the left, easier option to the right. Of course, we're gonna take the harder option today. Let gravity help you out as you come down here again Momentum, not speed. We're not looking to rush through this. Just carry a nice, even, steady pace through the obstacles and over the slick rock. 17 degrees, 18, 19. We're gonna come off this little ledge here. No problem. And we're just gonna continue stepping our way down. And that is the harder option at that little uh, fork in the road. So of course the easier option is gonna be significantly less aggressive than that one. Oh, this is another really fun section of the trail that I quite enjoy. Again, because the slick rock is so grippy, um, these more severe inclines look a lot more challenging than they are, um, mostly because you know they kind of look intimidating. But again, because you do have such an immense amount of grip between the rubber and the slick rock, they really, really aren't that difficult. But of course, don't do anything you're not comfortable doing, or your vehicle's not capable of doing. So about two miles into the trail, you're gonna to come to another uh, kind of a T intersection. You're gonna see left to Sand Flats Road or right to Fins and Things. Sand Flats Road is gonna take you off and back to town. So if you've done two miles and you're like, that's enough for me, you can go ahead and take a left and cut off here, but we're gonna keep going, taking a right and uh, continue on the route on Fins and Things. Right after that T, you're gonna come up to another fork in the road, which is becoming a theme here, uh, with a harder or an easier route. We're gonna take the right route, which is a little bit more difficult, I believe. Left is the regular route for fins and things, right is the alternate route. Way more aggressive, but I've done this before and it's fun. You are gonna need your lockers though. So the key to a steeper incline like this is just gonna be keeping the momentum. We're not looking to speed through it, but we do wanna keep that momentum going forward. We don't wanna be momentumly challenged. Uh, and so that is what we're gonna do. We have our rear locker engaged. We're gonna throw on our front locker if we need it, but we're gonna keep a nice steady walking pace all the way up through this obstacle. And uh, here we go. Now, we did spin a little bit, as you could probably hear. If we wanted to avoid that, we could have thrown on a front locker, but we were still keeping that momentum going forward. So, give it a little bit more gas, and right on through it, we went. up and over and keep that forward momentum going. We don't want to go too fast because what can happen if you start bouncing, that's going to compress your suspension and then that'll decrease your ground clearance. So if we keep a nice steady walking pace, that's going to allow us to uh, utilize as much ground clearance as possible. Up and out. And then once you do hit Sand Flats Road, because this portion uh, will turn into Sand Flats Road, we're going to take a right on that. Again, it's marked, the signs are there. Uh, it will turn into a one lane road, but we're gonna go right and hop right back on the trail. And again, to come to another T, there's arrows pointing fins and things to the left and a one way sign to the left. So 
as you can probably guess, we're gonna take a left. Uh, and the Bronco Trail app was also indicating that we should be taking a left there as well. Lots of rocking and rolling through this section, which can be uncomfortable. Uh, and you can't hit your head on these B pillars here. So if people don't like getting jostled around, I'd encourage passengers to hop out and walk. Use pretty, going at a walking pace anyway. Uh, but through this section, you will get jostled back and forth a decent bit. So just something to be aware of and keep in mind as we continue through fence and things. Okay, 4.8 miles into the trail. Another kind of rocky, pretty intense decline, but just navigate it slowly. You might get a wheel lift here, uh, here at the bottom, we'll see. Yep. Pretty big wheel lift. Okay, another steep incline here, uh, more slick rock, about 5.7 miles into the trail. I'm gonna go ahead and proactively turn on that rear locker just to maximize traction for us as we go up. Little incline to get us started. Come over this bump here, and then we're gonna take it up and to the right. We need to, we'll go ahead and throw on that rear locker, but we're gonna keep that momentum, that walking pace up through the climb. Easy does it, and then back, crest over the top. Down the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that rear locker. Lots of ledges, you guys can see. Lots of ledges, lots of climbs. Then which, ooh, which line do we wanna take here? Let's go the far right. The far right seems exciting. I like the far right. Rear locker, front locker. Just keep that momentum through. Easy, so easy. Lockers come off. Nary a squeal of the tire on that one. Continuing with our steep incline and decline theme, uh, we are 7.3 miles in the trail coming off of uh, a dome, and there's four different ways to go down. It all vary in uh, degrees of pitch. Um, we're taking, I don't know, the medium level one. Not the easiest, uh, but not the hardest. That just looked a little too risky for what we want to get into today. But nonetheless, still plenty of still plenty of pitch to get anybody anybody excited. Now, for this section where we're on these big fins, um, the slick rock. If you're afraid of heights and angles, I would not recommend doing this part of the trail and cutting off early uh, because there are some pretty significant drop-offs. Technically, they're not very challenging, although they look it. Um, it's just a matter of grip and traction. So if you're aired down and tires are warm, rocks warm, you're gonna be able to crawl up pretty darn easily. But again, if you're afraid of heights, uh, you don't like drop-offs and you know steep pitches, then I would not recommend doing this uh, because once you get in, you gotta go back out the same way it came in. So. Just a fair warning. Another pretty severe pitch here towards the end. I'm gonna go ahead and flip on our off-road pitch and roll screen in the digital gauge cluster. As we break over the top of this, headed down 19 degrees, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26. Oh, it wasn't that bad. We hit 34 earlier today, so. Over dramatic. Oh well. Easy does it. Well, there you have it, guys. There is Fins and Thanks Trail here in Moab, Utah. Two and a half hours, 9.5 miles, and keep in mind we were filming, so we did have to stop and start, and that was just with one vehicle. So if your vehicle's not as high clearance as this one, or you have a larger group with you, it may take you a little bit longer. It's safe to go ahead and plan for four hours, a half day, uh, but it's a great trail again, close to 10. We're gonna hop right back on this road, head right back in and grab a bite to eat. But like I said at the beginning of the video, Fins and Thanks is one of my all-time favorite trails. Got a great diversity of terrain, challenging obstacles, bypasses, so a really wide variety of vehicles can come in a wide variety variety of skill levels as well. The Bronco Trail app was really nice to use. The turn-by-turn -turn directions came in handy. Even though I've done it before, if this is your first time and you're not sure which way to turn, having that extra 
little safety net there to make sure you're taking a left when you're supposed to or a right, or just giving you a heads up on what obstacles to expect was really nice and it's gonna allow more people to use these vehicles on trails around the country. If you've been on Fins and Things, let us know what you thought down in the comments, send us some pictures, post them on the forums, or if you haven't been and plan to go, let us know as well. In addition, if there's more trails you wanna see as part of our trail guide series, make sure to let us know those trails and we will add them to the list. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, we hope to see you in the next video out on the trails or out at one of our Bronco Nation events around the country. Make sure to like and subscribe this video down below and we will see you in the next one. Bye guys.